Hey, Kevin, uh, we, we talked to Jarvis Landry today. He, you know, he takes a lot of pride in, in being out there every every game day. He said right now it's a broken rib that he's he's pushing through. I'm just wondering, what do you think about Jarvis doing that and what it means in the big picture for the team in terms of, does, you know, setting an example for other guys and, and just kind of, you know, giving you the, the toughness that, that, that you want to have for your team? I mean, that's the player that Jarvis is. That's why he's a leader of this football team. Uh, you know, I made a big deal of it in that indie game. Uh, we knew how physical that game was going to be. And he was a team captain for a reason in that game uh, because and I know he's a wide receiver, but he's a physical player that everybody feels when he's on the field. Uh, so uh, he gives a great example to uh, really all the guys. I, I, obviously, he's an established player and has been for a while. Um, so you were well aware of him, but did you have an appreciation for for that aspect of him, for the toughness, the you know the leadership uh, by example in that way, or, or did you really kind of have to be with him to to know all that? Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I had never met him, didn't know much about him. Obviously, I think that's until you're around guys and, and understand what makes them tick. Uh, you, you just know the player, you know the jersey, you know the helmet, but you don't know the guy. Thank you, Nate. Next up is Scott Patrick. Hey, Kevin, another one on Jarvis. Do you see the rib injury affecting him? And with something like that, is the coaching step, do you have to protect him at all? Um, do I see it affecting him? I mean, he, he, I'm sure he's sore, uh, and I'm sure he feels it when he plays, but uh, I think he plays up to the stand. I mean, he's playing well, so no, I, I can't tell you that I noticed it. And then in terms of protecting him, I think he's – medically cleared and, and ready to roll and, and and he's out there and he wants to play. Thanks. Jeff Shadell, you have our next question. Hey Kevin, can you give us an update on Nick Chubb and could he be ready for you after the bye? Jeff, no real substantive update other than he's progressing and he's right on schedule and uh, I'll I'll wait until they tell me he's ready to go. So I I, I can't speculate though. Additional questions for Coach Stefanski, if you could raise your hands, please. All right, we'll go to Marla Reidenauer. Yeah, Coach, a couple of the guys have said the practice yesterday was really good. I mean, do you see these guys like sort of, I mean, especially since some of the players said they were flat on Sunday, do you see them with a little more fire this week? Uh, no, I mean, I think the guys are pretty, uh, have been pretty focused throughout. Uh, yesterday was a good practice and guess what today's got to be a good practice uh, so uh, that's kind of the mindset that the guys when they walk through the walk through those doors they got to be ready to work but does there a that does the atmosphere seems different or more determined or anything we were indoors yesterday so the speakers <laughs> were a little bit louder maybe okay thank you mary Kay cabot you're up Looks like the uh, the Bengals defense is one that's in tra transition and all the names that, that we're so used to hearing year after year with Gino and Carlos and those guys, uh, they're kind of third down specialists sort of now to a degree. So um, what are you seeing now uh, maybe on film from some of the new guys that are in there and what can you expect from their defense? Yeah, Mary Kay, they're playing a lot of players. They're rotating the linebackers in there. They're rotating along the defensive line. They're rotating in the secondary. So our guys really have to go to work this week and understand your opponent. Sometimes you play those teams where it's, you know, the same 11 guys and the nickel comes in to replace the linebacker, but it's the same player. So really got to go to school. Uh, I, I think they have some linebackers that can really run some young guys. Um, so I, you're right. We got to see with their personnel changes, if that's affecting their schematic changes. And we'll kind of see that early on in this game. Thank you. George Thomas, you have our next question. Hey, Coach, I was wondering what you, um, if there was a difference in the Bengals wide receivers since that first game. And, and second of all, what do you think of T. Higgins' development since then? Yeah, I, I can't speak necessarily to the difference in the first game, but uh, like I've said, I, I think it's a really good wide receiver core that they have at their disposal. They'll line up with four wide receivers at times. Uh, so th they really want to utilize those guys, get them in space. They have big receivers, small, quick receivers. They kind of have a full complement of guys. And Higgins? Yeah, uh, 
fits right into that group. I mean, I think he's flashing for them. I think they're seeing the big playability uh, with him, but I just think it's a solid group overall. Thank you. Thank you, George. Nate Ulrich, you're up. Kevin, how did uh, Carl Joseph uh, look yesterday now that he's back? And what does he bring you guys um, when, when he is out there and, and, and healthy? I'd say he's progressing, Nate, coming off that injury. Uh, we'll see how he does today responding to, you know, working yesterday uh, for the first time out there at practice. But uh, Carl brings a, a veteran presence, smart football player, plays fast, uh, kind of fits what we want to be. And is Sandejo out again, or was that just a one-day thing? He'll be back limited, uh, though, today. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Scott Petrick, you're up. Hey, Coach. Do you see uh, Mac Wilson getting healthier the longer he gets away from that knee injury? And do you see him itching to get even more playing time? I know he never likes to leave the field. Yeah, I'd say yes to both. I think you see him, uh, you know, he's getting knocked around in there. He's getting, you know, I'm sure getting cut and people are hitting the knee and then he bounces back up, makes a great play, uh, chasing down that jet sweep. So I do see him progressing in long season with all of our guys. I expect all of their roles to adjust and grow uh, throughout this year. Thanks. Tom Weathers, we'll go to you. Thanks, Rob. Coach, I remember you being very uh, praiseworthy of Joe Burrow after the first game. What, what impressed you most, given that was his first road game? Yeah, I mean, he kept firing. They kept coming back. Uh, he did a great job. They were four for four on fourth down, I think. Uh, I thought his pocket movement was really impressive for a young player. You know, he stepped up, he slid right, he slid left. Um, so he, he's a good young player. What have you seen in terms of the film over the last five weeks then where, where he's shown some growth? I, I think in all areas, I, would, I can't really specifically tell you one spot that he's shown more growth than the others. But with these young players, these are great, valuable reps, these game reps. You know, without an offseason, he's seeing things that, that I'm sure they couldn't give him a ton of looks in training camp as you're installing a system for a rookie quarterback. So he's just, I think, banking all these game reps and getting better because of it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Tom. Mary Kay Cabot, you have a next question. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, Kareem has been also playing with, um, you know, some, some rib pain. And quite often, you know, you hear later, you know, six months later, oh, yeah, I had a broken rib. And we don't know if his is broken or not. But, um, you know, you've got several guys, Baker, Kareem, Jarvis, uh, playing with an injury like this. So I guess I'm just wondering, um, you know, what is that, what is that telling you right now about sort of the, you know, the toughness of your football team and the, the example some of those guys are, are setting? Yeah, it's the National Football League. Uh, I think those guys get it. No one feels 100% in week seven right now. So they're pushing through injuries. Uh, some guys are just gritting their teeth and, and, and pushing through and that's what you got to do. And, and uh, for those three guys in particular, and then we have a bunch of guys that uh, I think are playing, practicing, pushing through injury uh, that it's not the mentality wise, it's just not going to hold them out. Is this like with Kareem, is this one of those things where if Nick were around, uh, he might be, you know, not asked to do as much possibly? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. 